Right, hello everyone, welcome to another video blog from Model Railway. Um, I'm going to be doing a quick demonstration on the Auto 485 connection, which I've done before, so this is pretty much going over, recapping over some of the stuff I've already done. Um, but I'm doing it now with using a turnout rather than an LED this time. So up on the screen here is the, the Arduino code, all similar to the previous stuff. I've kept the servo, the CMRI, and the Auto 485 libraries included that we've done in all my previous videos and um, the define CMR address one because my Arduino that I'm using will be on address one um, we have to define the pin two we'll be using the 484 module on the Arduino side on pin two anyone not following this can check my website out it's all on there um, the variable that we set up previously for a turn at turn at one um, is set up here, which is similar to what we've done. The auto 485 um, we have to set up this for the pin for the 485. The CMRI code is similar to all the other stuff, and so is setting up the servo. The rest of it is exactly the same as what we have done setting up one servo. Um, turn out one dot attach three, so it connects to pin three. I'm right in zero position when we first do the setup. And we're beginning the bus at 9600. Make sure you've got the 9600 in there because I don't think any of the other figures work. Um, in the loop, we start the CMI process. We read the bit that's coming in from JMRI and we put it into the variable that we set up turnout 1. We then compare whether turnout 1 is equal to 1, and if it is, we write the servo to 90, de 90 degrees, if it isn't it must be 0, so we write the servo to 0 degrees. Pretty much self-explanatory, if you follow the rest of my blogs it's all much the same, the only difference is we'll be using the 485 on this demonstration. So for the JMRI, let's get rid of this, um, we have to set up similar to what I've done with the 485s before, and I'll show you my preferences, so if I go to edit preferences, now, if you're doing this and you've got your other Arduino connected, so say I had another connection up here for my, it would be a different port here, for my Arduino, you'd have two tabs up here. Um, and if you've got your Arduino connected up, you might have some conflicts. If you've got, if it's, if, sorry, if you've got your Arduino connected up by USB, because you're powering it from the computer and you're trying to do the 485, um, you could have conflicts. So you can either disable it down here, yeah, or get rid of it altogether, which I've done. So I've only got one setup up here. It's still CMRI. It's still a serial port. But on here now, I have a USB serial CH340 COM5. And you should have something similar to that. Probably a different COM port, depending on where you plugged it in on your computer. The prefix is C or whatever it comes up. I've not changed them in the past. And you've got to give it a name. And the name I've given it is 485, just so that I'm, I know that it's, it's the 485 I'm running with on here, not the... Arduino, and then you got to you have to save this and then configure a node. The node that I've given it is address one. No different to the previous ones. I've put address one in there. And if you look at my videos where I've connected up more than one Arduino on a serial communication, so you can have multiple Arduinos, you know that you can put two in there and three and four depending on the Arduino that you've got going. But whatever number you put in here has to be the same number. That you have in here for the address. So, because I've got one in here, my node is one. Um, so you set that node up, close all this down, save it, and then restart your JMR. You must restart your JMR for it to connect. And if it connects it all okay, it should actually be written down here. I'm connected to 485. Can't highlight, it, highlight that. I'm connected to 485 um, using serial COM5. Yeah. And then that's basically it for the tools, turnouts. Um, I've set up a turnout of CT1001. Again, we're using one. This time, the only difference with this compared to the previous ones on this address is that we begin with 100, which we had done with all the other demonstrations. But the 100 means that we're using address one of the Arduino. And if you've got a second Arduino, that will become 200. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. And then the one at the end is the bit address. So I'm running on bit. Zero. I'll just bring up the Arduino and show you. I'm running up here down on bit zero. Remember, we have to add one to that, so it becomes bit 
one on here. So I'm address one of the Arduinos, zero, zero, address one for the bit. And that should then set up your um, throttle. So I'll just bring up the video, my video, and I'll show you all the connections now. Um, so hopefully you can hear me because I'm going to walk around the room with my camera. So down here, um, I had my USB to uh, 485 connection, which is pushing at two cables. Oh, hopefully that still works, even though I've touched it. Um, that's the only problem is they can be sensitive. Um, but that runs two cables around the room. Now, I did run this off an extension USB cable, um, so I was extending it up to my workbench so I can practice with it. And I had a lot of problems with it, and it wasn't running right. And it ended up being an extension cable. So if you're not getting anything working or anything, remember that the cables that you're using can be causing all your problems. Um, and in the end, that's what happened with mine. And there was another issue with power supply I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so that cable runs up my room. You probably can't see it, but up there, it's too dark. Um, you see, oh, there it goes. It's a great grey cable. It goes all the way around the room. Um, this is a great way of getting your cables to go communication to go around to the other side of the, um, the room without running USB cables. And then over here, we have the bench set up with the bench power supply. The power supply over here is supplying the 485, and it's also supplying the servo with the 5 volts. But the USB, um, sorry, the Arduino, I mean, is running on a 12 volt power supply, so it's set the power supply. So remember, if you've seen on previous videos, you have to connect up the grounds between the power supply that will come in on the Arduino, so it's the Arduino GND pin, to my breadboard ground, so everything's got the same ground mixed up together. Now another issue that I had was I was running the Arduino of a plug-in USB to, to the USB socket, thinking I could power it off that, and I had nothing but problems. It only picked up every 10 communications to change the servo, so I was having major problems with that. So that's another issue. Power supplies can cause you a lot of problems with your code and you're running off your railway. So bear that in mind when you're having problems. Now I'm just going to try and set my camera up so that you can see all this working. Alright, so I've just set up the video so that it's now standing over there on its own. This is the other side of the room come to my computer. Um, and you can see the servo there running. And if I bring up my JMRI turnout table. And I start operating this. You see, it's not going to work. Right, so we get rid of that because it's probably communication. I right. and I bring it back up again. It's sometimes it's the issues when you're touching something. Oh, it loses communication. So it's one issue with using this on the railway and a big layer. Um, I don't my address. And I'm calling this one test. Right, see so it's working now. As you can see, every time I throw it, it's turning the servo which is on the other side of my room. So, one of the issues, like I just said, you can have is if you lose the communication for the serial port to JMRI, you might have to restart JMRI. That could be a big issue if you're running a big layout. Not sure how you get around that. Um, and the tables, you do not have to keep setting these tables up every time. As soon as you've set this up, like I've done, you can go over to panel and you can save the packet and you can give it whatever name you want to call it. Call it turnout or call it your railway. Like up here, I've got a Benson Valley table. Click save. Then next time you open this up, you can go to open panels and you can open up the panel that you've set up. So you don't have to set up all this. So the only difference between this one and my previous um, 485 video is that the previous one was just controlling an LED. Um, and on this one, I'm showing you just how to control the turnouts through this code. I'll be putting this on my web blog so you can copy the code. And if you want to run multiple servos, if you haven't seen my previous video of multiple servos, that again is on my website and it has all the code and how to set up multiple servos. So I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe because it keeps my own YouTube video going and I will be trying to get some more on here. My next step is probably going to be tidying up some of my wiring and now connecting this up, the servo up to a real turnout on my layer, which I've still got to set at. Um, just to show you, well, I'll probably show you that. Um, 
my video is not good at the case of my layout at the moment. Um, so I've got a few terminates to go on. So that's going to be my next challenge. Thanks for watching. Like I say, please subscribe.